you you were up there with him playing. Yeah, I played, car, ca- I played the solo on California Stars. Okay. What? So, yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. here's the question. <laughs> it is one thing, and I know this from experience, to sit with someone and you are asking them, right? They are, you, you are pulling something out of their soul, their psyche, right? Mm-hmm. So you are not in a position to be, let's say, emotionally open, let's say, or you are because you're, you're in the experience with them. But it is quite another thing to then be standing on stage with them all of a sudden, right? You're now, you're not the interviewer now. You are another artist up there playing with this with the guy. Uh, is there a part of you that goes, holy fucking shit, here we go. It's me and Jeff Tweedy. I'm not in the hot seat. I, you know, I'm in the hot seat now. He's not in the hot seat now. He's in the hot seat when you're interviewed. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm getting at? Am I making any sense? Is this thing on? Yeah. <laughs> well... <laughs> That's a, it's a good question. I'm, you know what? I've never, now I'm going to be like racked with fear and do the Cindy Brady <laughs> when I do these things. No, I mean, I, I will say this. I think, I think maybe you've hit on something that I've never really realized, but I think the reason my interviews are the way they are, and I've sort of made this sort of little name for myself as the musician who interviews other musicians is because I, I don't think of myself as the interviewer yeah ever the, yeah. you know most of the people i interview i you know i interview a lot of people I, I don't have any relationship with but inevitably you know like even when i interviewed jeff for the first time his my best friend had done his audio book they have a long relationship we had some mutual friends you know it wasn't like an unfamiliar situation um Although actually, let me say this, the first time I interviewed him, I'd already played with him on stage. So that, that's a bad example. But, um, you know, I just don't think I feel it's it's very rare that I um, sit down with an artist or even do Zoom or whatever, where I feel um, in, you know, in awe in any way that gets in the way of asking the questions or creating a safe space for them mm. to feel like they can say something off the record and I'm not going to repeat it, or we're just going to have a conversation. I don't really have questions. Yeah. Occasionally, if it's for like an important publication and it's a particular thing they want, I'll have bullets, but I, I don't really do. Occasionally I'll get like a publicist will say, can you send me your questions? I'm like, no, no, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Yeah. I guess I'm going to add, and I usually send a paragraph, like I'm going to talk about this. Yeah. Um, because I want them to be, I mean, Dick Cabot once asked me if I watched his show when I was a kid, because, you know, I, I just want to go in there and have a conversation like we're having a conversation. Yeah. This isn't what we discussed we were going to talk about. This isn't how we started. This is where we're at, because this is what's interesting. Yeah. And I yeah. think, you know, that was like the first time I, I told you this story last time I was on the show. But the first time I interviewed Jimmy Page, I said, you know, I'm not really a Zeppelin fan. And he said, you know, we started talking about bootlegs uh, and he said, how many do you have? And I had, I have them on a hard drive. And I said, oh, I have 256. And he goes, number one, how are you not a Led Zeppelin fan with 256 bootlegs? And, and, you know, and I said, and I said to him, you know, I am, I mean, obviously you're Led Zeppelin. I, I grew up with that band. Yeah. I want to, and as a musician, I want to know what made you tick. What got you to each of those places? So, you know, a lawyer will have his law books on the shelf. I've got my Led Zeppelin bootlegs because whether or not I, you know, they're my favorite band, I want to know how they got to where they, where they got. And, and he, so like the next time he came to town, I got a note from his office and they were like, Jimmy wants you to interview him because he loved it so much that I said, I'm not a fan. And yet, obviously I'm a fan in, in, in a deeper sense. Yeah. So we've had conversations about all kinds of crazy stuff that I, I just don't know if he would have with other people because he felt, or, or might not, unless it was, you know, something he was tasked to talk about or, or they worked really hard to get him there or whatever. We just have these riffing conversations because he's a, he's a really smart and entertaining guy who remembers everything, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, and I had a similar experience, very different, but similar experience 
with Robert Plant, who just does not want to talk about that stuff at all and talked about it because, you know, we were having coffees and he felt comfortable. He felt like I wasn't going to stab him in the back or make it a, right. you know, headline about cock rock or, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, so I never think about it in those terms. The only time I do remember um, interviewing Willie Nelson and, and about halfway through it sort of hitting me because he's talking and he sounds like Willie Nelson. I mean, it's right. Willie Nelson. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit, this is Willie Nelson, man. You know, <laughs> this little Cheech and Chong moment. Yeah, right, right. But even the guys who I, you know, I grew up adoring Paul Weller and I've interviewed him now, I don't know, way too many times and we're you know certainly friends of a certain type and and professional friends or whatever you call it and and i i never feel um i mean he's an intimidating guy to interview because he can be difficult but he's also you know softened up a lot with age too and and whatever and but i never think oh my god this is the guy that i used to emulate when i was 13 sure. in my first sure. band Right. You know, it's just that's never how like fame never interested me. Well, I'm not. I, yeah. And I'm not. I totally get that. I'm not talking so much about being nervous or or whatnot, you know, putting them on a pedestal when you interview them. It's more they're in the hot seat because you're asking them to come out with stuff. Right. And as the interviewer, you're not so much. Oh, I see what you're right. Yeah. And but then when you're playing with them. Right. I mean, I imagine if you got up there with Jimmy Page, <laughs> there might be an issue for you <laughs> to be like, oh, what am I fucking doing up here? I'll tell you. I'll tell you a funny story, actually, that many years ago, I got I got a call from this booking agent and they were like, would you like to open for James McCartney? And I said, sure, that sounds cool. Yeah. And then I got a call a couple of days later and they said, would it be a problem if Paul was in the audience? Which I thought was an interesting question. Like, first of all, a lot of courtesy to ask a musician, are you going to completely flip out if Paul McCartney's <laughs> sitting there like judging your tunes? You know, right, right. With the stroke in his chin. And I said, no, 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 it's totally fine. And I hung up the phone and was like, whoa, maybe that's not fine. That's, <laughs> it's not going to be cool. That's not, you know, that's not playing California stars with Jeff Tweedy, all due respect. Right. That's, you know, this is like royalty. Yeah. Um, it ended, the gig ended up not happening. I don't think they had an opener or whatever happened. Um, but I, it, it was, it was funny to kind of run through in my brain, um, you know, because that's in between, that's like, if you're having a conversation with somebody, eventually things lighten up and you're just having a conversation. Yeah. I, I try to make people feel, you know, safe so that they can say whatever they want. I'm not going to make them look like an idiot. And that's my reputation that, you know, everybody comes out looking good. And, and when you're performing, I mean, that's, you know, yeah, my gig is 50, 50, but that's my original gig. So if I can't do that after right. doing it for 40 years, right. literally you yeah. know, 40 years, yeah. then I have no business on that stage. And so, sure. you know, so I think, um, you know, Jeff was like, uh, he did say, Hey, do the solo. And I was like, like half an hour before we're supposed to go on. <laughs> You know the solo of California Stars, and I was like, "Yeah, of course." I went down in the bowels of the thing, and she was like, dee, 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 dee. "Yeah, okay, got it. Yeah, all right." Got up there, and of course, screwed it up. But right, <laughs> not not enough <laughs> that it mattered. But yeah. um, uh, but you know the, you know that's that. I don't know. You know, part of the job for them, whether whichever side of the microphone I'm on, but also for these artists, is to do these interviews. Some of them hate right. it, right. but it is it is. I mean, it is performative a lot of the time. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, if they have any skill or they have any length to their career, uh, they can they can pull that off. Vice versa, you know, part of my gig is to get up there. And it's in C. Come on. You right. Know? Right. I, I, right. Exactly. How can I not get that right? <laughs>